So let's get deeper into this now. I want to bring in Alex Barrazo. He is joining us live from Seattle. He's editor of Real Clear Science and supports GMO technology. And Alex, uh, we'll bring in someone who disagrees with you in just a bit, but I want to start with this. There haven't been any long-term studies of the effect of GMOs on human health, just on lab animals like rats. So how are you so sure that GMOs are safe? Well, I, I don't think it's accurate to say that there haven't been any long-term studies of human health. I mean, a, a review just came out uh, recently. In fact, a couple of reviews have just come out looking at the effects of GMOs on health and on the environment. And they concluded, looking, after, looking at thousands of papers, that there was simply no evidence to believe that there was any impact on the health and just a negligible impact on the environment. So I would disagree with that premise. Okay, well, uh, as I promised, we've got the other side. I'm going to allow them to come into the debate. Uh, just a short while ago, I talked with Ken Roseboro. He's the editor and publisher of the, non, the Organic and Non-GMO Report. Here's how he answered this question. Um, GMO supporters say genetically altered plants are actually more tested than non-GMO crops. Uh, shouldn't that give consumers some measure of confidence that what they're eating isn't uh, actually going to hurt them in any way? Well, people in the U.S. don't have much, a lot of people don't have much faith in the, the regulatory agencies. The FDA does not require safety testing of these foods. Uh, it's, it's entirely voluntary by the biotechnology companies. And there have been some studies that have come out raising concerns about these uh, genetically engineered foods. And there's also environmental, negative environmental impacts we're seeing as well. So he talks about a lack of trust in these studies and other concerns about the environment. I want to move on to something else, though, and that is weighing the benefits of GMO with any pot potential risks. Uh, listen to this exchange, and then I want you to weigh in. There is a large segment of the biotech community that argues that genetically modified plants that are weed and pest resistance uh, can uh, increase co crop yields. Uh, therefore, feeding more people world hunger, as you know, a big problem everywhere, and trying to solve that is a huge, huge issue. So shouldn't there be a place for genetically modified plants to be a part of that solution? There could be, as long as they're extensively safety tested and also that if they're in foods that they're labeled. Uh, 60 countries, 60 plus countries around the world required genetically engineered foods to be labeled. So they should be labeled for people in the U.S. as well who want a choice. So as long as they're safety tested, that's what I've, I've interviewed scientists. There are quite a few scientists around the world who have concerns about this technology. And they feel that, that it needs to be developed with caution because it's a very powerful technology and that it should be regulated very, um, tight, uh, very tightly, and that people should have the right to know whether they're eating these foods. So I want to get your thoughts on what Ken had to say and about this thought about labeling GMO products here in the United States. Well, I think that if, if, if he believes what he says, then he should support the, the, uh, the regulation and the investigation of whether or not organic food is completely safe as well because a lot of the pesticides that organic food organic farmers use and they do use pesticides are considered natural pesticides which means you can find them in the environment but that doesn't necessarily mean they're safe it is certainly true that synthetic chemicals and that GMOs have received a lot more scrutiny and a lot more testing than organic food and so if he really believes what he's saying uh, that's fine, but we would have to apply that standard to organic food, which does not receive the same level of scrutiny as, as traditional agriculture. And what about the labeling concept? Well, I think that labeling is fine as long as we do it on the back of the label. In the United States, labels on the back you know, will contain whatever is in it. I think that's appropriate. That's fine. But if you put front of the label... A uh, warning that I think that that signifies that there's something wrong with the food. It's like putting a warning label on cigarettes. You put it on the front because it's dangerous. I wouldn't support a front of label warning for GMOs. Let me uh, get the last piece of the puzzle here, and that is the millions of dollars companies like Monsanto spend on researching and developing new GMO strains. Once these companies reach a breakthrough, they can patent their new seeds. It's similar to what drug companies do as well, filing patents to get a return on their investment costs. Here's what Ken told me about this. Um, personally, I'm opposed to it, and uh, I, I agree with the Indian scientists who said that basically seed is sacred. It's the basis of our food supply, and one of the problems we're seeing with patenting of seed is that farmers are getting sued in the United States 
when they're suspected of saving the patented seed. Um, organic farmers are concerned about this. They could, they could potentially be sued by a biotechnology company if their patented seed is found, if the genes are found in the organic farmer's crop. There are a lot of concerns, and it's also leading to monopolies by the biotechnology companies. Right now, three companies own more than 50% of the commercial seed in the world. So, and that, that has led to price increases for farmers are paying more and more for the patented GMO corn and soybean seed. So it's had a lot of negative unintended consequences, I would say. So, Alex, he sees the negatives, the lawsuits, the monopolies, higher costs. How would you respond? Uh, well, the higher cost thing is definitely not true. If you look in at, at how much farmers spend on insecticides and on herbicides and other pesticides, they actually spend less. Yes, the seeds themselves cost more money, but if you factor in all of the costs, the farmers are, are are spending less money. That's why they're signing up for GMOs. If you look at the developing world in particular, in Africa and in India, they are embracing GMO technology precisely because it's cheaper and you get higher yields. What about the stranglehold, the monopolies uh, meant, that he mentioned? Well, I mean, I, I, I don't really know much about that. I mean, every, every industry tends to have a couple of titans in the industry, and Monsanto is definitely one of those titans. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not opposed to big industry, but I don't think that, I don't know if it's fair to say it's a monopoly. All right. Well, Alex, thank you so much for joining us from Seattle and giving us another viewpoint. Certainly appreciate it.